So I've never signed up for a German class where I thought I am 100% prepared for this class. I always signed up for a class where I was like, uh, I'm not quite sure, maybe this is a little bit too hard for me. But anyway, that's just a fun fact. My best German class ever was C2. My teacher told us this sick story about how she learns languages. She can speak Yiddish, she speaks English, she speaks German, she speaks Swabian if she wants to. Although I don't think she really cares for it because they used to make fun of her when she was a kid for not speaking Swabian. She said when she's walking in the forest or something like, you know, something like where I am right now, she'll speak out loud. Like, she doesn't care. And that is exactly why ULMX is so effective. It gets you speaking out loud. It's the prompt for you to speak out loud. You hearing your own voice, that feedback is the most important by far. Because no matter what, eventually you get used to your voice. And if you like your own voice, then you're going to feel comfortable, confident, and that feeling is going to transfer to the person who's listening to you. That's what ULMX provides. <laughs> That is not how you want to go when you're training with ULMX, first of all. And a fun fact about fitness is most of your fitness is gained where you're just really going easy. It's mostly gained through the amount of volume that you do in practice. And that's the same with all learning, and that's the same with fitness. Um, when you do ULMX, it's the same thing. You want to go at an easy pace. You don't want it to be like meditation where you have to concentrate a thousand percent just to not think, you know? You don't want to have to concentrate a thousand percent to get a little bit out of the game. You want to be able to just casually walk and play at a normal effort level. And that's the sustainable pace so that you'll be able to do a lot over a long period of time. And it's the same with fitness, you know. Nature really just always teaches us the same lessons over and over again because repetition is the key to learning. And that's why I keep saying the same stuff over and over again. Play ULMX, play ULMX, play ULMX, and you will improve and just take a steady pace, a sustainable pace, and you'll get the most volume in over the long term, and the volume is how you improve over the long term. That's what you normally want to do is a lot of volume, and then maybe 5% or less of your training is really, really intense effort. And it's probably the same with ULMX. It's probably the same with any practice. Most of the time, it's a nice, chill, sustainable pace. And every once in a while, you push yourself. And that kind of stretches your maximum ability. But it's the volume throughout the year that really builds the foundation of your competence or fitness. It's really what's... It's all the same, once again. Competence is kind of just like mental fitness. I mean, it's different words, but ultimately the same concept. One's applied to thoughts and the other applied, of course, to, you know, lungs, muscles, whatever. So just to continue driving this point home, because repetition is the key to learning, <coughs> oh, um, it's much better to go at an easy pace like this where I can talk. If I had the time to do this for like, 10 times as long, I would do that, you know? I would get fitter doing that than just going all out once. I'm dead, crushed. And um, the pace, the pace I'm talking about is literally conversational. Conversational. And uh, if you're going at a conversational pace, you're in a pretty easy aerobic state, that's good for training. And coincidentally, perfect for playing ULMX. I'm gonna catch that guy with the e-bike now. <sighs> Didn't catch the guy with the e-bike, holy shit. That guy is flying. That must be doing like 250 watts for him, holy shit. Next time I'm looking into getting a new car, someone remind me to just check out the e-bikes. Oh my God, those things are fast. Whew. The big mountain bike, e-bike. Conversational. You could just tow anything with that. You could rent an unhanger from Bauhaus. Pull it home, no problem. Oh my god. <sighs> so fast. So, 
it's no coincidence that in my best German class, <clears throat> my best German class of all time was definitely the one in which we spoke the most. Should come as no surprise. So the teacher was also super prestigious. She had like studied at Oxford and Cambridge. She could speak English, Yiddish, French, and German. And like I said earlier in the video, she actually told us, yeah, I talk to myself when I have space. If I'm on a trail, I might just start practicing speaking out loud in a loud voice. And it gives you confidence when you're in a situation where you need to speak out loud in a loud voice in that native, in that language, foreign language. We also did a presentation in that class, which was a chance for us to speak for a pretty long time. Most people never have a chance to just do a huge monologue, or at least they don't think they have a chance. I guess my point is everyone could do it at home if they wanted to, in the mirror or not in the mirror, just laying in bed if you wanted to. But people don't really rehearse for situations in life. I don't know if they consciously see that as somehow unauthentic or something. That's kind of what I believe they must believe. I've never had the conversation with anyone, but based on the fact that it seems like no one really does this kind of rehearsal in real life, I think they feel like it's kind of inauthentic. And I wanted to share an experience with you from our presentations. We did one during the semester. It was like a little seven minute lecture. And it could be about anything that we wanted to uh, talk about, which kind of made it difficult. One person picked time. You know time, how do you, how do you break that into a seven minute thing? I chose value added because it was something that was on the top of my mind at the moment in time when I took that course and I tried to just basically define the word in seven minutes and uh, one person's presentation like we were some of us weren't sure if we would really fill the time I was kind of worried about going over this one student did like double or triple the seven minutes like it was either like 20 minutes or at least 15 minutes and you could see what was happening because in that time essentially the same presentation got repeated but no one interrupted her because you could tell she was getting better at it and so for us it was like yeah keep going keep going because like you expressed that better than five minutes ago and uh or 10 minutes ago whatever it was in that process when you hear yourself out loud and you just go through that loop, it comes out better the next time. And that is practice, just like any other thing in life. I just recorded this whole video and the wrong side of the camera was on. So I'm recording it on an iPhone and the camera facing away from me was on. So I had the audio of it, but it's like filming the, the wrong side. Like I wasn't on the shot. So the best German class I ever took was C2, and some of the best characteristics of that class, you can just take, and you don't even need to take a class, you can apply them to your life. So I talked for like, I talked for 10 minutes or something, 13 minutes. I'm not really exactly sure what I said, I mean, I have a pretty good idea, but it's, just, it's like, ah, oh, well that monologue, it's gone. It's happened to me so much though, making videos. Making videos for me is a bit of like a secret weapon, like as far as practice. When else do you do a 20 minute, just no one interrupting you? A speech it gives you a really good, different perspective of your own presentation, your own pronunciation, and so on. But it's no coincidence that this class was the best and it was the one in which we spoke the most. In a class where you speak a lot, ideally 
you take the time to formulate what you're going to say and deliberately say it. And ideally, the teacher will correct you if you make a mistake or your other fellow students correct you. But in real life, people don't correct you. And there are two reasons for that. One is it's rude. You can try to overcome this by saying, please correct me if you hear me make any mistakes. And some people have a lot of understanding because they know you're learning a foreign language and they will be open to doing it and they'll fight their reflex not to say anything out of courtesy. But the second reason will always play in. If you guys are having a conversation, it's not just practice. There's a reason you need to communicate with each other. You guys are doing something. The two or three or four of you who are in a conversation in a group, communicating, speaking, transferring information back and forth, do have a purpose and an objective, and it is not for you to improve in the language. The only time that's the purpose and objective is in a class, or when you set time aside for your own practice. So if they're willing to be rude to you upon your request because you've asked them to help you improve and tell you when they notice an error, they still might not have time to do it every time. In fact, they probably won't have time to do it every time. Probably very rarely is what I've found to be the case. And I notice a lot of my own errors. People are not correcting my errors. It's like, honestly, it would be way, way too much work. They would especially when you really just focus on getting an idea across to someone, they don't care if you mess up the genders. And you can notice your own mistakes. It's not gonna change anything. You just wanna get that idea out. You're, you know you're making the mistake because you're going too fast. It's just the same as if you're playing piano. As soon as you go faster and faster and faster and faster, at some point, it's just too much. Same with typing on a keyboard. You can type error-free if you type very, very slowly. And then as you go faster and faster, you make more mistakes. And the more important the conversation and the information is, the less important the spelling mistakes, the more important the time in which it takes for you to deliver the information and the quality of their understanding in the end. So they don't have time to give you language lessons, you know? But that's the beauty of a language class. That's what it's there for. And if you're speaking a lot and not just sitting there listening, you know, I think I'll show you an image I saw on Instagram. I thought it was really funny. If you don't know this cartoon character, his name is SpongeBob SquarePants. The, the cartoon artist really had a lot of fun changing this character. He's like a sponge who lives at the bottom of the sea. And so he's always like changing shape. This one, he's like a bodybuilder. He's huge. He's jacked. And uh, the caption says, my ability in English listening or comprehension understanding and then like the next one it's like he's writing in his diary there's like a rainbow and it says my understanding and reading and and then or my ability in writing or something and then my ability in speaking he's like all shriveled up and tiny and weak and that's because speaking is really the hardest part speaking it's a lot faster than writing or understanding. It's just a lot more active. Yeah. But that's what YOLO Max is all about. We love speaking. Speaking is the best. <laughs> it's the most fun. And you don't have to sit at a desk to practice it, which is the best part about the YOLO Max app. You can just go on a run, go on a jog, clean your apartment. You can build a pyramid in the desert if you want, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> just to come up with some kind of crazy idea. But um, you get to speak, you're not tied down to a desk, and you're getting corrected after every single sentence. So it's the win-win-win. That's my favorite German class so far. I've taken four or five of them, and the best one is always the one in which you speak the most. So I guess the best one's really whenever I'm talking to a YouTube video because I talk for like 20 minutes straight. But yeah. Good times. <laughs> see you in the next video, or you'll see me in the next video. Until then, see you all on Max, Universal Language Media Exchange.